You're listening to the REI Marketing Nerds Podcast, the leading resource for real estate investors who want to dominate their market online. Dan Barrett is the founder of AdWords Nerds, a high-tech digital agency focusing exclusively on helping real estate investors like you get more leads and deals online, outsmart your competition, and live a freer, more awesome life. And now, your host, Dan Barrett. Hey guys, welcome back. You're listening to the second part of last week's episode. Let's jump back in. I am curious though. So it's this thing you said right at the end where you said you saw the opportunity, you said, I'm the guy, right? And somebody's going to be the guy, it might as well be. That's right. I am I'm curious, man. Like you, you, you have a lot of confidence, right? And you're not, you're not illogically self-confident where you're like, I could do anything, watch me lift this car over my head, and then you just get crushed or whatever. Like you like you see, you're capping your downside, you're making rational risk analyses and and taking smart, you know, making smart decisions, but you obviously have that confidence in yourself and your abilities. Is that something that you feel like you've always had? Does that come from when you were a kid? Does that come from your professional life? Like, where does that come from? Wow. That's, that's another great question. Yeah. No, there's no way. Um, I, I had, uh, the confidence, you know, built, built in, you know, I, I didn't, I wasn't born. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> born this way. Um, you know, it, it taught me a lot. So it's, it's funny. So I, I did sports when I was younger. I do sports now. You know, uh, I guess you could say when I was, when I was coming of age as a young man and I was a runt, um, you know, and I got bullied and stuff when I was younger. So my, my brother and his buddies took me into the wrestling room and, and got me on the wrestling team and huh. started in a you know, first year. I completely got just, just completely got destroyed. I was horrible. Right. Like I think yep. I had one win my first year. I worked hard. I got in the program. I surrounded with myself, uh, with people who pushed me and people who inspired me and I worked my ass off. And then I ended up winning, uh, did a year in college, uh, D three wrestling. Now I do, um, I train jujitsu and stuff. So, and, um, and I'll tell you what, that, you know, going through that experience myself was very, um, it, it, that built my initial, uh, uh, as you say, confidence. It's like, Hey, I'm good at, I'm, I'm, you don't have to, you don't have to be good at something when you first start, but if you want to be good at it, you put in the work, you surround yourself with people who, you know, challenge you and can help guide you. And you can, you can do better than average. You can do better than average, you know, and the only thing worse than failing, right. And, and kind of my mindset, the only thing worse than failing is never trying, you know, especially now, you know, now that we're founder and I found myself in that position, uh, like, Hey, this is, this is what leadership is in corporate America. And especially in our industry where most folks, especially in a sales role uh, or brokerage role, they're just focused on themselves and their immediate team and making more cash, right? Becoming thought leaders or creating a brand or uh, or forming your own startup, they're usually paid. They, they're they're paid pretty well to keep their blinders on and just focus on their business model, their team, and things like that. So one thing I learned from uh from, about leadership in corporate America, and then which I think was like sort of motivating to me, you know, through training uh, jujitsu and through uh, running our own division at auction was when you bring these other people on board and you sort of, um, and you help build them up their career, their experience, their confidence sort of in your own way. So um, that's another reason why I kind of went and did this. Cause I just wanted to test myself that yeah, can I, can I build a profitable company? So uh, the answer is yes. Uh, also, you know, that hard part, of getting it wrong, you know, I, I got it wrong like the first three times. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we, we did a few different things. We had three failed business models. Um, this one caught on uh, a few years ago, and then we decided to turn it into a tech business um, about two years ago. So we've just been growing Exchange Loans about two and a half years ago. Sorry, uh, COVID really really screwed things up too. Yeah, but uh, we weathered the storm and, and kept moving on. And um, I'm really looking forward to see. You know, how much of an impact and a change I can make in this industry. And then, you know, who else we can convince to, I guess, you know, come on board with us, right? Yeah. I love the um I love the story about getting into wrestling, which I think is one of the of all the sports that kids play in school, right? Is probably the one that teaches you the fastest what failure feels like because oh, yeah. it is not Nah. Much much like it, it, I did jujitsu for a couple of years and really enjoyed it. And I would always say like the thing that jujitsu did better than any other martial art I'd ever tried was they were like, hey, you think you can do that thing I just taught you? Try to do uh, it on that guy over there. And yeah. he's not going to let you though. 
And then you just realize like, oh, I can't do that thing at all, right? I can yeah. do it in a very specific situation where everybody else is going to go along with me. But the second somebody decides that they don't want to do that, I can't make it happen anymore, right? So you oh, yeah. learn so quickly, hey, if it doesn't work, you got to try something else. So yes. I, I, I love that you did that. That kind of leads me to something that I, I was curious about. You know, I, I, we, we typically, before someone comes on the podcast, we do a short meeting and get to know each other a little bit. And we talked a little bit about values. And I wanted to ask you about your values because of all the people that I've asked that question to, you seem to have a really clear idea about what your personal values are. And even in that story of, of doing, you know, getting into the wrestling team and just absolutely being terrible and losing and failing all the yeah. time, most people would quit at that point. They'd say like, well, I'm bad at it, right? So I'm out, right? I'm, this isn't the thing. You stuck through, right? So what are your personal values and, and how do they kind of show up for you in this, you know, your professional life, your personal life or whatever? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I'd say like at, at the, um, at the very top, it's just, it's that, you know, it's the, uh, it's the, the rebel mindset as I think uh, mm. a guy that did a big podcast. I don't want to get into it on London real. I don't know if you saw that one a while ago, having that rebel mindset, I think is probably the thing that defines myself, my morals and like just how, how I look at things. It's not that I necessarily don't like being told what to do, or I'm just, you know, an, I'm not anti-authoritarian, but it's like, mm. you know, what, what what makes me me and what am I going to do different, right? And am I just going to accept the world as someone someone lays it out for me? Like, um, it's funny, I was watching some Steve Jobs last night. I like watching those old, uh, those YouTube videos. I saw where he basically is giving his pitch at his his investor summit or whatever you want to call it, his um his release or his launch for the iPhone. Mm. And it's, it's funny, you know, he's just, he's just up there in his, in his turtleneck and his jeans, you know, no belt. Yeah. <laughs> and like his, <laughs> and his, white, his white new balance shoes. Like, Hey, <laughs> Hey, I'm going to revolutionize the, the email phone and yeah. the, um, and uh, the director, like online directory and, and, and uh, operating systems and applications all with this little device. Right. So it's like, um, and he said something too, you know, he, he says a lot of, a lot of great things. You know, one of the things like uh, I think he says, like, stay, stay naive, right? Hey, if I if I didn't know how hard founding and starting and running and growing a tech firm was, I would have never done it. Also, like the, the the world is created by people who are no better than you. So it's like, go give your shot. So in, in that whole perspective, um, especially like you said, going back to it, when you're if you're doing good in corporate re and, and re commercial real estate uh, finance or sales, it's very hard to buck the trend and go do your own thing. So um, I, I have a rebel mindset. I, I would say number one, in terms of morals and values, it's, it, it goes with a, a you know it closely aligns uh, with uh, with American traditional American uh, conservative values uh, as well as libertarian values uh, as well as Christian values or, or uh, you know the 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 ethos of the New Testament and, and the Old Testament too. So I, I, I'm big on liberty, economic prosperity, freedom, and liberty, right? And that's sort of why I got into what I doing what I do. Yeah. And then just you know morals, you know, same as it ever was the Ten Commandments, you know, do unto others the golden rule, um, things like that. But I, I'd say above all else, I, I have a rebel mindset that's not necessarily anti-authoritarian. I just um, I, I like to try to think think outside the box, which I think. Every good entrepreneur, if you don't have a rebel mindset and you don't have a uh, winner take all, never going to quit attitude. I don't think, I think it's tough out there, if, especially, you know, we're bootstrapped, right? So, um, to, you know, leaving that all aside, a, com a very comfortable life to buck the trend and sort of pursue my own vision. Um, I think those are really the only things that got us to this point because um, it's very easy to give up, go back to, uh, go back to a nice cush uh, desk job, right? Well, yeah, you get the the corporate card back, right? Uh, the, mm -hmm. You know, it's well, I, I have one now. It just belongs to the company. That's like a joke. <laughs> like whenever you go to check into a hotel or upgrade, <laughs> and they say it's a corporate account, they're like upgrade. You know, it's on it's on the company. It's oh, like, yeah, all right, it's cool. Like, yeah, like, yeah I, I have on one that has my company name on it, but it just debits from my checking my personal yeah. checking account. I'm like, eh. it, but it, I, it I, hurts I, the same. It hurts the same. <laughs> Well, I am so, and I, I love the whole, the, the, the sort of value threading through of this kind of like liberty and rebelliousness thing, right? Because yeah. it kind of comes through in the business model where you're trying to enable people to basically do business directly with one another, you know, bringing people together to help them sort of do the transactions they want to do. 
And at the same time, you're sort of in this more corporate environment and you're sort of like, oh, I could I could do this and it would be safe or I could go and do my own thing. And I think it, it all really pulls together really well. So, okay. Here's where I'm going to ask you some kind of about your experiences and kind of pull this back a little bit and direct it over to the, the marketing and sales piece, which is kind of yeah. at the core of everything that everybody's ever going to do if it's front facing, right? And you are yeah. very front facing. And you you kind of mentioned like, you know, you're the one giving the pitch. You're the one making the phone calls. You are the one saying like, hey, you need to understand the vision of this company, what we're trying to do, and you need to get involved. So what have been some of the lessons you've learned doing that process? Like what has worked for you and what hasn't worked well for you or just what stands out in this kind of experience of, like I said, it's a it's a big idea. It's not like, hey, it's Uber, but for socks, you know, or like whatever, right? It's, you've got to dig into it a little bit. So what's it been like translating that for people? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, that is the, the really the million dollar question, right? Um, What I've learned, especially, so I didn't know anything about marketing, starting a brand, starting a, um, a firm. And and since we started, you know, we, I think we first started back in 2015, you know, our first three years, we struggled. We struggled running a lending firm, a consultancy firm, and uh, an origination firm as well. Yeah. And then we got into this because someone came and reached out to us because we had a rep for it. At that time, LinkedIn and video, you know, people were just starting to use video for marketing mm. uh, within the real estate industry. You know, obviously, not like Super Bowl commercials or anything like that. But um, yeah, we we um number one thing I learned, try new things. Do not be afraid to try new things. And it's like, yo, every day you you're waking up and you're putting yourself out there, no matter how you slice it. The question is, is it does anybody, you know, does anybody quite frankly give a shit? Does is anybody hearing the message that you're putting out there? Right. And then the three R's is it relatable? Is it repeatable? Is it reachable? Are you reaching the people? with a relatable, repeatable message. I think that distilling marketing down to that, I think is really at the core to me it is. Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm still learning more about that every day. You know, we just, we just, you know, we just got done some, some really great work with a branding expert. It was funny. We, we were, he's a really great guy. We're, we're going to continue to work with him. And, you know, he sort of did the same thing, worked in uh, the, you know, for large fortune 500 companies, was very successful, went off and did his own thing. You know, it's building his own brand as an expert consultancy to help folks like us, right? One thing he mentioned, he's like, you know, we don't usually, I don't usually take on assignments if these folks haven't been in business for more than five years. You guys have only been running exchange loans for about two and a half years. It's like, let me tell you, you guys are doing so many things so much better than the majority of, of folks I see out there with, you know, over a hundred or a thousand employees, et cetera, big budgets. And I think we've been able to do that just because I've been focusing on those three R's. And now we're kind of going back through now that we have our, uh, I guess you say our launch product. We were operating out of MVP and single player mode for a very long time, Excel. Now that we have our launch product uh, and sort of we, we really understood who our customers, that's another thing. You get this message, you come up with your idea, your business model, you create that message, you know, uh, relatability. It has to resonate with your audience, right? You have to know your customer and what resonates with them. What problems does your your product or service so solve, and you know how do you relate to them as well? So I, I've just been that's really the focus at how I, I look at things now, um, and I, I'm very happy that I went through and tried all this on my own. Failed. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I sent out some bad emails. Yeah. <laughs> <I mean, like, laughs> well, look. Let he. If there was like a marketer's us. anonymous. Yeah, yeah, marketing anonymous. I I would probably need to do. I don't know if I would do all, all twelve steps, but I I'd probably put me down for at least eight. <laughs> I did them all. I did them all. Um, but I'm glad I did because now I get in these these conversations, and and now that we grew the business, I'm able to now hire experts. Uh, to not only tell me what to do, but also have other people do the to, to help me with the work. I don't think. You know, if I was if I was bad at marketing or didn't have a, a, you know, like I said, putting myself out there, trying to learn from failure, things like that, and just the ability to to pick myself back up after sending out a, a horrible email, 
Um, I don't, I don't think we'd be to where, where we are today. So I'm very grateful for, for marketing and everything I've learned. Yeah. It's, it's not quite as bad as being slammed into a high school wrestling map, but it's, it's up there. But yeah, it's like, Oof. there's no better classroom in the universe, right? You gotta, yeah. you gotta actually get the, the reps in. I mean, it just strikes me as, yeah, again, we're sort of coming back to like your personal strengths and how they inform kind of your whole journey through today being, you know, chief experience officer at exchange.loans and really doing this new thing. It's about putting yourself out there and being okay with failure, but then learning from that and getting better as a result, right? I mean, it's such a powerful loop. So I'm curious, I know this about you uh, because you told it to me earlier that yeah. you are a comic book fan. You like comics and comic book characters. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, what is your favorite comic book character and why? And why? I have my answer. I want to know yours. Yeah. What, what, without a doubt, it's Batman. Uh, and the reason why I love Batman so much, I think why everybody who loves Batman, he has such, it's it's obviously, you know, it's, he's not too relatable. The fact that he's a billionaire, orphan, world's greatest detective, all this thing. The thing that he relates to everybody with is the fact that he's just a man. He's not a superhero. He doesn't have super superpowers. Right. Um, and uh, he's a master at, at, I mean, figuring things out. I mean, that's that's what a detective does, right? Puts the piece of the puzzles together and figure things out. And uh, and he's very strong uh, and moralistically. You know, I don't know. Not only I sound like such a nerd right now. Not no, only like, no, in the no, comics. No. I want this in the show. Look, I will edit this out if it goes longer uh, yeah, than the whole, whole rest of the show put together. But it's okay. Yeah, so yeah. you know. It, I also played some Dungeons and Dragons back in the 80s. Yes, and 90s, yes, which is me very, too. All which right, is very, an, which is very, uh, you know, at the time is very uh, uh, anti-Christian as well because I went, I, you know, I, I, I grew up for a few years in a Christian mm -hmm. school. Yep. Um, but they have th something that's called like basically character grid, morality grid, right? What's good, evil, lawful, neutral, chaotic, yeah. and um, Batman's in that he's like the epitome of your uh, your lawful, neutral. Or your your neutral good, right? Or your mm. good uh, your good neutral. Uh, sorry, your good neutral character. But yeah. he's always going to do the right thing. The thing that's better for him, and the thing that's for the greater good, uh, regardless whether it lies within the confines of the rules. So I think that's why it's, that's very in depth analysis. I actually have a book. It's called uh, Batman and the Psychology of of the Mind. Oh, so it goes through the psychology of Batman. So that that's how big into Batman I am. So wow. All right. Well, yeah, I'm. Yeah absolutely going to google this book and uh get way into it because i'm also a big batman fan i would say like yeah. my not necessarily the comic book character i've read the most which would probably be batman or spider-man or whatever but as an adult the character that i always identified the most with was iron man right because iron man very similarly the power isn't the suit the power is his brain Right. Yeah. You could drop Tony Stark in the desert and two days later, he's going to fly out in a in a plane made of twigs and coconuts and stuff. Right. Like that's <laughs> his superpower. So to me, it's always been like, you know, applying yourself in that way is what makes superheroes like really, really powerful. And, you know, not throwing shade on Superman or whatever. I love a good Superman. I've got the the absolute copy of um, All Star Superman, which is one of my favorite comics of all time. Like oh, I yeah. love Superman, but Superman's a the ideal right like he's the ubermensch right but you you relate to to characters like batman and uh and tony stark so i i love that i promise i, I was will big, not I'm out you iron anymore man as, a, fan as well i'm a big it, iron man fan as well i think i think like you know if you look at the two characters they're very they're extremely similar right yeah, yeah except yeah. tony has this rocks this playboy lifestyle right yeah. You know, he does philanthropy, so does Bruce Wayne, but he's in the shadows, whereas Stark loves being in the limelight. Yeah, Tony Stark's still partying, partying a lot. I won't lie, as a nerd, that appealed to me, too. You yeah, know, so I was like, yeah, why not? You know, I don't, you know, Batman was probably more like my actual mood most of the time. But, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I like I like me some Tony Stark. So, all right, I, I, we're coming up on time. I, I got I to start to wrap this up. There's so much stuff I want to talk about. And particularly if you're an investor and you're listening to this, you really need to go over to exchange.loans. Again, it's the, the letter X. So exchange.loans. Go and check it out because they're doing really, really interesting things. But I did want to talk a little bit about personal development. Because that, again, is a thread that winds its way through everything that you do. We've talked about this sort of pattern of, hey, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to fail. 
I'm going to get better over time. I know I can get to where I want to be. So I am curious, what for you has been one of the most powerful things that you've done for your personal development, let's say over the last like five years, right? Because obviously you've got, you know, your, your time in wrestling and your time in corporate America and stuff, but just looking back the last five years, what's a habit or a book or a person or, or something that you have really leaned on to help you kind of get to where you're at right now? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, uh, especially the last five years. Well, I'm, I'm 40. I'll be 41 soon. But ever, ever since hitting 30s, like life is totally flipped upside down. I, I had my, um, my, my, my daughter. I mm. went and started this company. Um, and now it's like, you know, and through that, through that, and this is a great segue into answering the question more directly through that process in my 30s. It's like, it's like, you know, you come out and you're in your 40s, like, holy shit, I'm, I'm the leader now. Right. Yeah. Uh, so and that, that happened to me like training in jujitsu, you know, I'm, I, I got my brown belt two years ago. Like everyone's coming wow. to me to ask me for questions. Now, you know, I call myself a founder and CXO, you know, people want to talk to me and, you know, we're a thought, I, I'm a thought leader in uh, loan sales and things like that. Um, so the, the things that I found, yeah. So what I rely on, number one, I, li- I like to read. There's, there's not a whole lot of things in, in the human experience that they are very unique and different and one of a kind to you. Other people have experienced them before. So mm-hmm. if I want to read, if I want to focus about business or what I'm doing, I can go look and read about what others have done before me uh, in terms of like morality and what am I dealing with my life and spirituality. So there's only one book for me. So, you know, I, I don't <laughs> I don't know, and I don't care if that offends anyone. Unfortunately, um, I don't yeah, think you know, anybody's going to get offended that. Yeah, yeah you, you go, and, I, and I'm, you know, I, I grew up as Christian, so I'm, I'm a bit more familiar with it than I guess most who are picking it up for the first time. Um, so going back and reading the entire Bible as a grown man, having been through, you know, some experiences in life, and you know, in my late 30s and early 40s now, reading it, totally different than what it, it has, totally different meaning. Uh, hmm. And it offers me a lot of insight, and most importantly, it gives it gives me patience. You know, never being in a rush to uh, to make a decision or feeling pressured or feeling busy. You know, if you're feeling that, then something else is typically wrong, right? Hmm. So uh, doing that, and then just you know, who can I rely on in terms of you know you know people that you can just ch- chat to and go to in confidence, whether you're having a, a personal, professional, or some some kind of spiritual issue, or what what have you. You know, I, I rely very heavily on my co-founder, on Andre, on Chris. I can chat with them about just about anything. Um, and then, you know, having good friends and good family and, and other colleagues you can rely on uh, when when you need help or you need to you need to pick me up or you need some good advice. So that's that's what I look for. I look to read from other people in similar instances. I like to go to the Bible too. I think you can pull out anything. There, there's something relative to exactly what you're going through in, in the good old book, right? thousands of years of knowledge distilled in just a few chapters, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And then just relying on good friends, family, colleagues that I can speak to and relate to and get, you know, seek counsel with. I think those are really the three keys for me. I mean, I love it, man. It it just strikes me, right? It's the the, the fundamentals, but the fundamentals are fundamental for a reason, right? They're the most powerful levers you have, you know, your network, your knowledge base, like these things are um, or your your life philosophy, right? These are the these are the things that get you where you end up in life. I think you've done such a great job of kind of summing that up. So exchange.loans, again, the letter exchange.loans is the website for people that want to learn a little bit more about you. Do you do much social media? Like where where would you like people to look you up or reach out to you? I am, we are, I am all over LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is, cool. you know, in terms of social media, like that is, that is the, the top of the mountain that I want to be king of for all loan right. sales. So um, and we'll, we'll be hitting LinkedIn harder a bit here in the, the next few months as we launch and, and, and get the final, uh, ticks on the on the on the product just right all right so th- this is definitely if you are listening to this you should go on to linkedin and search for michael jimenez that is spelled j-i-m-e-n-e-z is that correct that's that's perfect all right michael jimenez dude thank you so much for doing this man this was a blast i think the stuff you guys are doing at exchange.loans is absolutely fascinating i cannot wait to follow your journey Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. This has been uh, this has been very insightful to say the least. I definitely uh, it's it's tough, and I'm sure you talk to a lot of founders. It's tough out there as a founder. You think that you're the first guy with this problem, but uh, we we are not alone. So uh, and, and this this helps sort of prove it. it's like everybody else has gone through this <laughs> this a similar journey. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for uh, shedding some light on these topics and uh, helping people find out who we are and what we're all about.
I hope you had fun listening to that interview. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Hey, if you are listening to this podcast, I would love if you could take a moment to leave a review or a comment wherever you downloaded this episode. It would really help me out. I read every single one. I love getting the feedback and it helps other people find the show. It really means a lot to me. It means a lot to me that you take the time to listen to this every week. I'm putting a lot of effort into making this show the best that it can possibly be. So let me know what you think, good, bad, or indifferent. Let me have it. As always, I really appreciate you showing up and I will see you next week. Cheers. This is the podcastfactory.com. 